Bitcoin itself, you know, using the logarithmic monthly logarithmic chart, I think it's pretty close to two standard deviations oversold now. I'm just doing the chart. Unfortunately, I can't show it on my screen, but I'm just going to have a look. Listen, this is an ugly market. What I think is going on here is there are two factors for the market to digest. One is inflation, and that created the market to set up in certain ways. You know, everyone's crowded into certain themes. Then growth starts evaporating. You can see it all over the place, stuff like consumer discretionary stocks. You can see it in the forward-looking indicators. And so the market has to deal with inflation plus growth. And what that's basically mean is everyone's hit the liquidate button. So everything's getting liquidated. This is the correlation of one style markets that I was warning about. Um, and it hits everything from crypto to you know pretty much everything. And the thing that stands above all ends up being the dollar because that is the kind of safe haven. Dollar today's had a slightly different day. You know, we've corrected some of the move, but we've seen some huge moves in the dollar and I'm not sure it's entirely done yet. So. There is a massive liquidation going on as people struggle with their portfolios because basically whatever position you've got, it's wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and that's the pain everyone's going to have to take for a while. Personal view is that we are doing the transition from inflation to growth. The next shoe to drop will be the inflation shoe. I think inflation and growth go lower and we either get we either head into recession. Europe looks like it's already in recession. China has been in, essentially in recession for a while now, but maybe coming out the other side early stage. Um, and the US forward looking indicators suggest, look, it's not clear it's a recession, but it's clear that the ISM is certainly headed to 50 or maybe just below, which is the ISM, the um, Institute of Supply Management Survey. Anything below 50 suggests that growth has stalled. Anything below 47 usually gives a recession. So we're getting in the phase where we're going to have a very slow patch. And there is no sign yet that that's turning around. So it could accelerate lower. So the recession is potentially on the cards. It's certainly on the cards in Europe. And we need to figure out what does this even mean? What does it mean? And I think the big thing it means is bond yields are coming lower because the inflation narrative, I think, is about to change. We're seeing commodities crowding out growth. Um, and I'm also keeping an eye on crude oil to see how it trades. A lot of people have very bullish forecasts, but I'm worried that the demand situation is not quite as good. And if crude oil does break this pattern to the downside, and it's far to be proven yet, then the inflation narrative would disappear very quickly because Inflation expectations are basically driven by the oil price, bizarrely, um, as if that's not the only thing that drives inflation, but that's what drives inflation expectations. That would change the narrative a lot and drive the panic into bonds. So if you've got a falling equity market, falling growth, falling inflation, well, that drives everybody into the dollar and bonds. And, you know, as people know, I love the dollar and bonds generally as a trade. You know, that's the mo most macro trade of all. Oil either needs to break above 110, which it tried to do, and maybe even a bit higher than that. Or if it breaks below 95, then I think it accelerates lower. So we're in a tight range. It's kind of, you know, tender hooks, which way it goes. If oil breaks higher, it's only going to increase the demand destruction and the squeeze on corporate balance sheets and the squeeze on households. So it's not a good setup here either way. We've either done the damage already or we're going to do some more damage. So it's you know, these are very important markets and you know this is a very macro environment and you know it's very very important to understand what it is. Yeah. Now if I'm right and that the inflation story is going to change and growth is going to go slower then we start shifting into a dynamic where we question what the central banks are going to be doing and if bond yields are going to come lower stuff that's been really beaten up like the further end of the growthy stocks you know, they should be more interesting in that environment because they got killed by inflation. I think gold does pretty well. It's, you know, interesting enough, gold and growth stocks tend to do badly as real rates start tightening, but they got to zero and it looks like the world's falling apart just as the central bank are trying to 
undertake quantitative tightening or at least no QE. And if that's the case, then real rates are going negative again, if I'm right. And that's usually good for gold, crypto, long end of growth, that kind of stuff. Amazon is a really interesting story. People aren't paying attention. Mm. Amazon, the world's largest retailer, is saying they're overstaffed. They said it in their statement, they're overstaffed and the year on year comparisons versus a strong year last year because of COVID is going to make them look bad. But the overstaffing element makes me think that there's layoffs to come. And there's, I think there's broader layoffs to come because of this fall in consumption. Because if you think about it, last year, particularly in these kind of stocks, there was an enormous amount of staffing to deal with the excess demand. Well, that excess demand is now gone. And therefore, you're likely to see they're going to have to trim some of the staff. So, you know, this is not a good setup. But in terms of equity markets, the average recession, and this doesn't feel like it's a financial crisis in the brewing. It feels like I've been talking about for a while that the business cycle is going to get shorter and slightly more violent as opposed to the long moderation period we've gone through since 87 or so. So if that's the case, then it could be a shorter, sharper clearing event. And the average kind of recession in that sees the equity market down between 20 and 30 percent. So I think we're getting closer to the bottom than the top. But who knows? You know, only time will tell. Maybe things develop that get uglier. Real economy seems to have slowed really fast. So, you know, because what's happened is everybody built inventories because of supply backlogs, right? The right thing to do. Supply backlogs clear. Demand falls because of high commodity prices and inflation. Everyone's stuck with a whole bunch of inventories that need to be liquidated. Yeah. That's not good. And we're seeing uh, the supply backlogs clear because, you know, the port of Long Beach in the US much clearer now. We're seeing the same with um, um, freight traffic has gone negative year on year, suggesting that the economy may slow significantly forward. So that those kind of indicators, restaurants been weak. The consumer has offset some of this by credit. So we've seen them drawing down their savings. So the savings ratio has been collapsing. But consumer credit has held up. And that's what traditionally happens in the US. They balance off savings and credit. But if people start losing jobs, then all bets are off. Again, I don't think there's anything really severe on the horizon. But let's keep an eye on it. I could see it written large that we're going to get a slowdown. Um, and so that's why I thought, OK, this is starting to get concerning. Now, I've been looking at this narrative developing for nine months. Economies take a long time. There's only nine data points, you know, monthly economic data. But I've seen it writ large for a long time. I've been writing about it in Macro Insiders for a long time. Now, I didn't I could have taken the commodity trade, but my time horizon and my secular framework means that I tend to err on the side of the disinflationary. So I'll, I would rather take the setup and wait for this bigger setup, uh, which I think is coming. So, yeah, I mean, it so happened that the timing got spot on. But, you know, I use a whole group of things from secular trends, business cycle to technical analysis and flow of funds. Technolog technological adoption of whether it's robotics or AI or um, space or crypto or any of these genetics, that's not going away. Yeah. So even if they trade sideways, they become cheap over time because the network adoption keeps growing. Now, sure, recessions can slow these things somewhat. So, you know, as I said, the, the, the next shoe to drop for me is let's see what oil does. Um, and then I'm starting to get very close to my DMARC indicator counts on bonds. So next week would be the weekly nines and 13s all in place. But usually at the top of the chart of truth, the big 40 year trend channel where we've just broken out, I think it fails. Um, and normally we get the monthly D mark. That wouldn't be till June. So I'm thinking much like 2018, we kind of get this peak inflation fears. It starts dropping off. It kind of corrects a bit. And then maybe later in the year, the back end of the year, yields really start to fall as kind of people realize that both inflation and growth are disappearing. Amazing. Nobody really talks about price. Everybody is in the build phase. It's really interesting. So crypto goes through two phases. One is price when everyone talks nothing but price. And then when the price or the network kind of is less interesting, people focus on building. Now, crypto 
companies raised 32 billion in VC last year. So everybody there is seeing what's happening in tech and everything else, and they're immune to it. Now, the crypto token prices might go down, but they're immune to it in terms of their businesses. So what they're allowed to do, they've timed it perfectly in the capital that they raised, is they're able to now, they've all got the capital they need to build the next phase of the crypto revolution. And they're all working hard. I mean, everybody from people building out derivative marketplaces to NFT stuff through to, you know, the people at Solana building out all of the future of Solana network, all of them are there, all of the building stuff. People like FTX, you know, awash with cash, building out the future of the entire integration with TradFi and DeFi. So fascinating. I and mean, people are breathlessly excited. Transition phases mean mass, ma maximum uncertainty. What do markets hate? Uncertainty. Um, so, you know, I think it just continues downside for a while. I don't think this is an end of the world event here. Um, I think it's, um, it's a recalibration and I've started to buy, you know, growth names. I'm starting to get very close to pulling the trigger in bonds as I think the narrative will change. Now, looks like crypto, as I said, is going to get hit further and it's going to come a bit lower down. Um, and I think it's still within the broad range that we've been in since March. And I think that's OK, because it looks like the networks are pretty stable. I network growth is stable. They're not falling. They're not growing. Um, it, it is what it is. That narrative turns around if, if the inflation narrative and growth narrative turns around. If not, they're just weak within this big sloppy range. And I don't see anything to change that yet. Like no instant event. There's plenty of events on the horizon that can change that. There's a, at the margin, the Bitcoin physical ETF, if and when that comes, E2.0 merge, if and when that comes. There's, you know, there's a bunch of things. There's interest rates falling, if and when that comes. All of these kind of things will start changing narratives within crypto. Meanwhile, crypto is basically just a churning of the same capital within the crypto ecosystem. So capital that was going to leave is left. Um, so it's a churning of capital, which is where NFTs have been a place where people have made money because that's within the ETH economy. It's a separate economy. It's outside of the US dollar economy. Right. People just people tend to go into the ETH system and don't leave. Um, and so they tend to look at NFTs or DeFi and other stuff and rotate around. And that's what's happening now. Bottom end of the range is the 30,000 level. You know, there's plenty of institutional buyers around. There's plenty of people setting up, as I say to people. It all takes time. Um, and people are coming slowly into the market, but this macro backdrop's not helping. So you just kind of have to tough it out. I mean, that's what this thing is all about, right? Crypto is all about that. Bitcoin itself, you know, using the logarithmic, monthly logarithmic chart, I think it's pretty close to two standard deviations oversold now. I'm just doing the chart. Unfortunately, I can't show it on my screen, but I'm just going to have a look. Um, so the two standard deviations oversold tends to be where this stops um, at maximum. Uh, one standard deviation, this is where we got to in March 2020, is roughly where we are now. So March 2020 got to here, um, the sell-off after, yeah, in fact, it's never really been, um, it never really goes down much further than this versus its logarithmic trend. So we're kind of in that zone, but that's what we're kind of saying anyway, which is, you know what, 30,000 at worst, 20,000 would be, you know, the, the final bloodbath level. Who knows? But, you know, again... The idea of this space, if you're looking at network adoptions, I don't trade the space. I never have. I just look at it and say, I want to own the long term trend. The long term trend of adoption is going higher. I see no reason to change that narrative whatsoever. So you just keep dollar cost averaging.